So I'll be showing you guys how to change the charger port on a UE Boom 2 speaker. And this is a pretty straightforward repair. It is not necessary to take apart the entire unit just to get to the port. It is quite accessible. So let's get to it. To begin, let's get flip it to the back side where the port is located and use a pry tool to pry back this spine. So there are some clips that it is clipped to to the frame. Just find them and once you have unclipped this spine, the top of it, let's make our way down. It's helpful to alternate from one side to the others for it to unclip evenly. That allows more slack. So now once you have got it to this point right here, it is not necessary to go any further. We have the port right here. Let's go ahead and free up these four Phillips screws. Now that the screws are out, get yourself a flathead or something thin. So use this flathead to go around and pry out, pry out this, this part, which is the port. So we can set apart, set aside the main speaker. And now we have six more Phillips screws on the port. Use a flathead once more to gently pry up on this PC PCB. Now there is this white covering or sealant over the or attached to this board. Use a flathead to sort of pry it off. Now I would say to, to be very gentle and watch where you're prying. There are capacitors, filters, components that you could nudge off with your tool. So be sure that you're watching where your tool is getting into. Got that freed up. And you can see here where exactly all the components are on the board. So it is vital not to nudge them or break them off. There's just one more covering on the port. There we go. Next, let's grab our Omni vise and attach the PCB onto it. And now we're ready to start working with our heat gun. Go ahead and apply heat to the PCB. Once it starts wiggling, then you can make your way and pull it out, like so. Go ahead and add some flux to the anchor holes as well as the pads. And we're gonna go ahead and remove any excess solder that's left behind. We can go ahead right now and pull out any uh, or soak up any of the leftover solder with a solder wick that is left in the anchor holes and on the pads. I'm gonna flip it over and try the back side. Now, it is sort of difficult with this model, I've noticed, to absorb all of the solder from the anchor holes. So another another way that I, would, that I do it, if I'm struggling a little bit or if for some reason it doesn't wanna 
come out of the holes, I would go ahead and grab the new pour here. Just place the new port. I'd go ahead and sort of sit the port onto the anchor holes. Now it's not gonna go all the way through since we haven't cleared the holes, but let's go ahead and get it sort of partially in part, part ways into the holes here. Now that it is sort of in there, let's go ahead and do this technique that I use if I'm having difficulty absorbing all of the solder. Just have it all three of these melted simultaneously, pushing down. I think that's all the way. Great, we have it now all the way seated. Can attach it back onto the Omnivice. Now we can also add some solder on the top side of the anchors just to get a more secure bond. Like so. And lastly, let's go ahead and solder the pins onto their pads. And like always, be sure not to bridge any of the pins. Now with this port, it does seem like the solder would want to stick onto the actual uh, housing. So be sure to uh, free it up from there. All right, we got each of the pins connected. And if you're ever unsure, if you're ever unsure that whether or not it's, they're connected or not, or if it's a good solder joint, just grab like a flathead and nudge each and every one of them. And if they move, then you gotta resolder it, but these look fine. Let's go ahead and clean up any of the leftover flux residue here. All right, let's get this mesh uh, covering here back onto the port, like so, and it poured itself back into its housing. All right, now that's put into place, let's get the unit back here and install or slide this port back in. Center it, go straight down. Like so, and screw in the last four Phillips screws. All right, now that we got those screwed in, we can clip back the spine, as well as this top cover here, like so. There we go. And that's how you replace the charger port on a UE Boom 2 speaker.